this thing around God turn it around God turn it around God turn it around Call it on the name Changes everything God turn it around God turn it around God turn it around Cause all of my hope Is in the name The name of Jesus Breakthrough will come Come in the name The name of Jesus Praying God come Turn this thing around Turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Call it on the name that changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Cause all the my hope.
Apostolic Church. This is Pastor Matthew O'Shell, and I'm excited to be here with you tonight on this Wednesday night. What a blessing it is to be together. So I want to say hello to all my church family and to those that are watching that you're not a part of Sod Rock Apostolic Church. I want to welcome you to may God bless you real good tonight. I pray that his blessings will just be poured on you and your family and your life. We believe in a resurrecting God. We believe in a God that will rise up in our lives and will change our lives and will bless our lives real good. Uh, thank you, worship team, for leading us in the presence of God today. There's nothing like worshiping with the Lord and singing the songs of praises to God. So we're thankful that you're here with us today. We've got all kinds of exciting things coming up and some things that are going to be going on in the church. Please be mindful of those announcements. We are excited about revival coming up next Wednesday. I'm excited about what God is going to do. And I believe God's going to do something great and powerful and mighty 
at our church. We'd love to invite you next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Sunday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday start at 7 o'clock, and Sunday, one service at 11 o'clock. But we are we're excited to be in the house of God. It's a great day to be living for the Lord, Jesus Christ. If you feel like someone uh, would be blessed uh, by hearing what I'm fixing to talk about, we're fixing to talk about a huge and important subject into our salvation process, uh, I'd like for you to like and, and, uh, and to possibly share this video. Today we're going to be talking about baptism, the doctrine of baptism. And last week, if you was with us, we, we talked about the doctrine of repentance and, and how important it was for us to repent of our sins and how biblical it was for us to say, Jesus, I'm sorry, and Lord, I'm changing. I'm going to change with the help and the grace of God. I can do it. We talked about the importance, the doctrine. In other words, is it can't be changed. It shouldn't be changed. And the Bible says that that cursed is the man that adds or takes anything away from the Word of God. And so we don't want to add anything, and we certainly don't want to take anything away. God's Word, God's Word stands alone. He doesn't need anyone to change it to fit me. I need to change to fit God's Word. And so tonight, tonight we're going to talk about a subject that, called the Doctrine of Baptism. In other, words, in other words, is this, what does the word of the Lord have to say about baptism? I want to point out a couple of important notes. So going back to the Old Testament, when you look at, at Solomon's temple, so, and, and I think it's an important place to start, because the Old Testament typology leads us to a New Testament, New Testament method. And here is something that's important. When you look at the layout of Solomon's temple, first, before you ever go into the holy place, before you ever walk by the golden uh, lampstands and the table of showbread and, and the, the, the golden incense altar, and you, 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 before you ever cross and push the veil back and go to that most holy place and and see the mercy seat and the cherubims and all these beautiful things that go along with it before you ever get in there's a few things on the outside that you got to work on and you can find this in a very easy uh structure layout of of solomon's temple first you've got to you've got to go and visit the brazen altar the brazen altar God required the people to regularly sacrifice a perfect animal, a lamb or a goat, a doves, bulls, you know, an animal. And why did he do that? Why was blood such a necessity? Because blood was the only thing that could cover one's sins. Even from the Old Testament, Solomon's temple, they had to visit the brazen altar before they ever got to the holy place of God. The blood of the animal, it justified, it justified the people before God and restored their relationship with Him. It was the sacrifice that was so important. The second thing that they had to visit before they went into the holy places, they had to visit the, 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 the brazen, uh, the brazen, the bronze brazen, if you would, or some would call the sea. This was where the priests specifically washed themselves at the basin, purifying themselves before entering into the temple of the living God. This had certain measurements on it. It was it was it was very big. It was it was a uh, 15 foot uh, long. It had had about 10,000 gallons of water in it. It was it was big. But these were two things that you had to enter into as or before you went into the holy place and got into the presence of God. You had to have blood on your life for for the forgiveness of sins the blood the blood the blood we used to sing songs uh back in the day and every now and then we like to bring these songs back up there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb 
The blood was important in the Old Testament for the forgiveness of sins. We find out as well uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 12 when God was, 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 was trying to deliver his people out. The Lord, as, as, as these plagues were, 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 were coming on them, were coming on to the city that they were encaptured by, the Bible said the only thing that's going to save you and your house is if you put the blood on the doorpost, if you put the blood in certain areas of the house. And the Bible says as the death angel as as the death angel would 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 come by if he saw the blood oh my goodness if he saw the blood then he would pass by you that you 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 would not die if he saw the blood he will pass by you i don't know i don't know about you tonight but i am thankful for the blood of jesus christ if it wasn't for his blood, we wouldn't even be able to watch this tonight. We wouldn't be able to gather together in the house of God Sunday. The blood of Jesus, one, one writer said, the blood will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. And the blood that Jesus shed, you see, see in the Old Testament, they'd have to revisit different animals and sacrifice animals and get the blood that would fall down. They would take the blood inside of the holy place. They would they would, they put the blood over top of the mercy seat. They have to do this several times. But I'm telling you tonight that one touch from the blood of Jesus Christ will wash away all of your sins. His blood is still fresh today, and so. As we continue in our Bible study, the doctrine of baptism, I want you to understand that baptism is a typology. It is a typology and it is a necessity. It is a necessity. If you're watching this today, it is a necessity for you to go down in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, I want you to prove this. I, I, I thought it was just about me asking the Lord to come into my heart and everything was just going to be all right. In the book of John, chapter 3, and verse number 5, it says, Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, except a man, that's you and me, be born of water. What is water? It is the baptism. And of the Spirit. That word Spirit is capitalized. That is the Holy Ghost. He says, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Why? The next scripture will actually tell you why. Because it says that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee that ye must be born again. It, 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 it's important to understand. Not, not because it's an apostolic doctrine. Not because it's a Pentecostal way. But because the Bible says we must be born again of the water and of the Spirit of God. We must be born again of the water and the Spirit of God. Last week we talked about the, the, the doctrine of repentance. In the Bible it says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 5, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Ye are saved by the gospel. If ye keep in memory that I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered you unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. We understand the gospel. Last, last week we talked about repentance. We understand the gospel. It, it, we, but we must understand that Jesus died for us. Jesus was buried, but Jesus rose again. He rose again on that, on, on that, on that third day. This is known as the gospel. So again, last week we talked about repentance, but this week we're going to talk about being buried with Christ. 
We're talking about having the blood of Jesus on our life, having having a repented heart last week. This week, we're talking about applying the blood to our lives, applying His 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 ultimate sacrifice to our lives. And the book of Colossians, chapter number two and verse number twelve, it says, "We are buried with Him in baptism, wherein also we ye are risen with Him through the." faith through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead let me tell you if you want to if you want to rise up you're going to have to be buried with him in baptism in the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3 it says know ye not that so many so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Baptism is not just a feel-good moment. We are when we go down, when we go down the right way in Jesus' name, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For we have been planted together in the likeness of of his death we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection (coughs) it's important to understand that if if if, that when we go down and by baptism that we are being buried just as he died on that cross just uh, just as he was buried we are being buried when we go down in him all of our sins, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ is being applied to our life. The blood of our risen Savior is being applied to our lives. This is important for all of us. It doesn't matter who you are today. You must, you must be baptized into Jesus Christ or with Jesus into his death. The Bible says in Galatians chapter number 3 verse 26, it says, For ye are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What promise was he talking about? I'm talking about the promise of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the power of Jesus Spirit living and breathing on the inside of you. You see, this is the doctrine of baptism. You got to understand this before you understand anything else. You got to understand that when you're baptized the right way, you're being baptized into Christ. You, his blood is washing away all of your sins. And I'm going to tell you, his blood is so strong that there's no sin in your life that it can't wash away. There's nothing that you've done in your past that his blood cannot remit from your life. There's no sin that is too great where God's blood can't come down and just take away or take away that sin. I've I've had the privilege of baptizing hundreds upon hundreds of hundreds of people. And I'm telling you the number one thing that I hear a lot when I whenever we whenever we baptize somebody and they and they rise up out of that water and we ask them, how do you feel? They most of the time they all say the same thing. I feel free. I feel free. I feel like a burden's been lifted off my life. And this is why they feel that way. They feel that way because they are being free. They're being free from sin. They're being free from, from the punishment of sin. They, they are being free from, from, uh, uh, um, from, from death of the death of sin. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. And so when you go down in the name of Jesus, you are being buried with him. The blood is being applied to your life. It's more than just a, a preacher taking you underwater. It is a symbol. Symbolic, just like they had to have the blood before, before they walked into the holy temple of, 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 the, of Solomon's temple, just before they had to have the blood as the death angel passed by there, there in, there, there in Egypt, we have to have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our life. In the book of Acts, 
In the book of Acts, chapter chapter 2, it says, at verse 37, if you're reading this, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. In other words, just something, something got to them. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do we need to do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. We talked about that last week. He better don't stop there. It says, and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39 says, for this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Peter said you need to repent. Repentance is the death of. Remember, it was the gospel we were talking about earlier. When you repent, it's the death. I'm bearing, I'm crucifying this flesh. I've got some things in my life that aren't right, Lord. I need to get it right. And I'm going to pray to you, God. I'm going to get it right with your help. That's that's the death. But the burial, the burial is being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like the scripture said, he said, you got to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. If you want your sins remitted, you must go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh! Oh, there's power in the name. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the most beautiful name that I know. And and then, then when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, it is the resurrection. It is the resurrection power that God puts in your life. So, so today I want to I want I want to dive into this. I want you to have that reassurance today to know that you that you've gone down in the name the right way. Now, I want to deal with 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 a with a scripture that a lot of people they often use this scripture, but I want to I want to break it down a little bit more for you today. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, a beautiful a beautiful revelatory scripture that that that's in the word of God. It says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Father. Let me tell you, if you're watching this today, let me tell you, Father's not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not is not a name, but if you'd read it, if you'd read it, if you'd read it in the in the context that it was written, it says baptizing them in the name of the Father. In other words, is the Father has a name in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 28 and 19 is really a revelatory scripture because the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus and the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Jesus in his own words told his disciples to teach them and and baptize everyone in the name. We, we, We can then go through the Bible to read where his disciples obeyed the commandment of 28 and 19. We read one of them in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Another one where the disciples obeyed Matthew chapter 28 and 19. I want to get this. I want to I also want to add this today. Matthew chapter 20 and 19, uh, it, absolutely true, was written after Thousands of people had already been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It was written in in AD 60. This was this was this was this 60 years after people was already going down the name of Jesus Christ. So this is Acts chapter 10 verse verse 47. And 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 it says and this is hope for us watching today. This is hope. It says can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry there certain days. Uh, if you would keep reading down, we, we understand. We understand that they had received the Holy Ghost. And they asked the question, how in the world did you know they got it? They heard them 
They heard them speak with tongues. We'll talk about that next week. But 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 Matthew chapter 20 and verse 19 was being fulfilled in this particular scripture when they said they said, "Hey, the, they they've received the word of the Lord. We've preached to them the power of the gospel, the a, a gospel where our Jesus, he 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 lived, he died, but he rose again. They they've heard it, they've believed it. Now we got to go down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to we we got to be buried with the Lord because the disciples understood that salvation was not complete without proper baptism. That's why they absolutely say, "Hey guys, there's water here. There's water here. They've already got the Holy Ghost." We he said he said we we're, we're going to command them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. It wasn't a, just a good suggestion, but it was a commandment from the word of God. And this was important for them for that day. They was following, they was following the protocol that was given to them by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's visit one of my favorite passages of scripture when talking about baptism. It can be found in the book of Acts 19, verse number one. And I want to note a couple things out there. There might be someone watching today that you have a sincere belief, a sincere belief that all you have to do is just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. Today, I want to tell you, I'm not here to belittle you one bit. You're not going to find it from me. Believing is definitely a process of, sal of salvation. It's an important one. And I'll go one step further. If you're watching today and if you've not gone down in Jesus' name and, and you were baptized a different way, I'm not here today to belittle you. I'm praying that you receive the revelation, the revelation of the way they did it in the Bible. The way that they did it, not just my, just not, just not my opinion, but the way they did it in the Bible. So if you're watching this today and if you're a believer and if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want, I want you to read this scripture with me today. If you've already been baptized and before we read this scripture, if you have already, already been baptized, but it wasn't specifically in the name of Jesus, I want to read this scripture for you today. Acts 19, chapter, chapter 19, verse number one, it says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Understand that Paul was not just talking uh, to atheists. He wasn't talking to non-believers. He was talking to believers. He's talking to disciples. These are people that are going out spreading spreading the good news. He's, he, he, he said unto them, he said, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? It's in there. Acts 19, he says it right out. He says, hey, do you got the Holy Ghost since you believed? He recognized that they were already disciples and he asked them the most important question. Why, if they're already believers, then what difference does it make? If they're already disciples like Paul, what difference does it make? Paul was teaching and preaching. He wanted everyone to be saved. He said again, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye, since, since ye believed? And they, and they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were preaching that to believe on the Lord. They were preaching to believe on Jesus, but they hadn't received the full revelation of baptism and the Holy Ghost yet. They've not received the full revelation of the gospel of sal of salvation, and he said unto them uh, that they they well they they said back unto him he said that we've not even heard of there be any Holy Ghost and he said unto them this is what Paul immediately said he asked the question unto what then were ye baptized now remember Acts chapter ten we read that Acts chapter ten the Gentiles had already received the Holy Ghost before they were baptized so they got it before they were baptized. But the disciples commanded them to complete the salvation process. You got to go down in the name of the Lord. Here you find, here you find where we've got people that have repented of their sins. Okay. They repent of their sins and they've been baptized. Okay. But, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. And Paul asked them, he said, he said, he said to them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. 
that that was that was that was fair. John was clearly baptizing. He baptized the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. And as soon as they heard this, these believers, these disciples, these are people that have already repented. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So not only were they baptized the first time, they saw it such as a necessity, as such a necessity for salvation. They were rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. We'll talk a little bit more further in Scripture Acts on Acts chapter 19 a little bit later of next week about the Holy Ghost, what happened after they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Something interesting to note again is, is that he's talking about he's talking to believers. And that's why I'm here to, tonight to tell you. I'm not here to put you, but put you down. I'm not here to belittle you. I'm not here to belittle, uh, maybe perhaps what you've been taught today. But but the scripture clearly says that they were believers. The scripture clearly says that they were already disciples. The scripture clearly says that they were already baptized. But the scripture also clearly says that they were rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to make a bold statement to you now. And it's not it's not of hate or 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 anything, but it's just it's just out of love that after Christ rose again, there was nobody even before Christ rose. There was nobody ever baptized in the titles of Father, Son and Holy Ghost. It happened many years later, which I want to talk a little bit about, but everyone in Scripture after Christ rose again, was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the for there might be someone watching today that would think in their heart or their mind and, and, and maybe have a sincere thought process. It don't matter how I'm baptized, Pastor. It don't matter. The Lord understands. But the Bible also says in Ephesians chapter 4, And verse number five, it says there is one Lord. There's one faith. That word faith is believe. There's one believism. There's one belief. And there's one baptism. There's not many baptisms. There's one baptism. There's not many ways to baptize baptize someone. There's one baptism. And this is important for us. We read in the book of Acts chapter 2 again in verse 38 what what Peter told them. In the book of Acts chapter chapter 10 we read where they were commanded to be baptized in the name of the Lord. In Acts chapter 19 verse number 5 we read that that Paul said said you need to be baptized again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 16, now, now we, we, we read in the book of Acts because this is the actions of the church after Christ had rose again. This is where the church started, the actions of the church. In Acts chapter 8 and verse, t- and, and verse 16, it says, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Another example where someone was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. It says, And now, why tarriest thou? Arise, get up, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord. This is important. This is important for us to understand that there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would look into the a few encyclopedias, uh, one, one particular 
one particular person, Edmund Schlink, when he talks specifically about the doctrine of baptism, page 28, he says the baptismal command in its 28, Matthew 28 and 19 form cannot be the historical origin of Christian baptism. It's impossible. At the very least, it must be assumed that the text has been transmitted in a form expanded by Catholicism. In the Council of Nicaea, we understand that this was something that was absolutely addressed in 324 A.D. The, the Tyndale, the New Testament commentaries, one, uh, in, in, in page 275, it says, It is often affirmed that the words in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are not, are not the exact words of Jesus, but a lateral, literal addition to those words. Wilhelm Bosit in the uh, Kyrios Christianity, page 295, it reads, The testimony for the wide distribution of the, of the simple baptismal formula in the name of Jesus down into the second century is so overwhelming that even in Matthew chapter 20 and 19, the Trinitarian formula was later inserted. The Catholic Encycl Encyclopedia 2, page 263, reads, the baptismal formula was changed from the name of Jesus Christ to the words Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by the by Catholicism in the second in the second century. And I'm going to tell you in this place today that the Scripture is never wrong. The Scripture is never wrong. Matthew chapter 20, 19 is not wrong, but the but the revel the revelation of it is important for your life in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. He has a name. His name is Jesus. In Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12, we read, Neither, there's no salvation. What is salvation? That's what we've been talking about. Repenting, baptism in the name of Jesus and filling of the Holy Ghost. It says, there's no salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What name is he talking about? He's talking about the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, he's got a name. Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory, to the glory of God the Father. Colossians 3 and verse 17, it reads, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray in the name of the, in, in the name of of Jesus. We, we pray for people's healings in the name of Jesus. When we go to the hospital and pray for folks, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. When we, when we go and ask God to forgive us of our sins, we apply the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ to our lives. Why wouldn't we baptize in that name? Why wouldn't we when the scripture tells us tells us that we got to go down in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, in Colossians 3 and, 3 and 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. It's important today that you get this revelation. If you're watching me today, you got to get this revelation. I'm almost done. I, I want to I give a little bit more just so it just sinks in your spirit. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse number 16, it reads, He that believeth and is baptized. That word baptized uh, doesn't mean a sprinkle. There's no such thing as, as a sprinkled baptism in the Bible. You can't find it in there. It's not in there. It started years later afterwards. But he that, it, that, is, that believeth and is baptized, th to be baptized means you must be fully immersed. You've got to go fully down in the water. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned it's important for your salvation it's important for your salvation
in First Peter chapter three verse twenty. I know I'm reading a lot of scriptures tonight, but I want I want you to get this in your spirit. It says First Peter three and verse twenty. It says, "Which some sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a, was was a preparing." wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure wherein to even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filthy of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what he was talking about was this. He was bringing in the Old Testament to the new. He said, he said, eight people were saved by the water. Eight people were saved by the water in the Old Testament. He said, he said, just like they were saved by the water in the Old Testament, baptism doth now also save us. You got to go down in the name of Jesus Christ today. You must go down in the name of Jesus Christ today. If you're watching this today, if you're watching this today, and and I want to tell you there's 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 a whole lot more. <laughs> there's a whole lot more where they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're watching this today, have you have you been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? You say, Pastor, what difference does it make? I, I, I hope I've given you a scripture to tell you and convince you today. People were rebaptized because they weren't rebaptized the right way. I'm not here to belittle you. I, I don't want to do that. That's not in my spirit. I just simply say to you tonight, there, there's more. There, there's more. There's so much more that you could have in your life. Perhaps, perhaps you're watching us today and you've repented of your sins and you've been baptized, but you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, but God's filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, Acts chapter 10 is, 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 is for you. Acts chapter 10, I want to encourage you. I want to admonish you today to do it the way they did it in the Bible and go down in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're already a believer and you're watching today, I, I, I want to salute you and I want to, I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to acknowledge you today. I'm not here to belittle you or your faith or put you down. I'm just, I'm just here today to tell you that, that, that what, what about the believers in Acts chapter 19? What about the disciples, people that were, they believed in God? They were already baptized under John's baptism, but they were rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's indisputable. It's there. It's there. And when they got up, they got the Holy Ghost. We'll talk more about that next week. Today, I, I, if you're one of those people today, I, I just I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ today. If you're watching, please consider your salvation. Please consider your salvation. Was the name of Jesus applied to your baptism? His name is important. I wish I had time to talk about the power of a name the power of a name. The power of a name is important for us. Again, John chapter 3, verse 5. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I send you the, and send you that you must be born again. He said, he said, except a man be born of the water, baptism, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Today, if you're watching today, and perhaps perhaps you're watching, say, Pastor, I, I, I need to get baptized. I really need to get baptized. Perhaps you're watching us today. If you're close to the church or, or you, you can make it out even tonight, I know, I know we're online tonight, but I, I would leave my house tonight and I, I would meet you at the church to baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Pastor, I, 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 live, I live a little bit of ways and, and, and it would take me about an hour or two hours to get there. I, I'd wait on you. I'd get there for you. I believe in this so strong in my spirit that you must go down in Jesus' name that I wouldn't even wait. I wouldn't even wait till the morning or even Sunday. I, I'll meet you at the church. If you live a far ways away and perhaps you're in a different state, 
Perhaps you're in a different state, and, and I'll find you a pastor. I'll find you a church that, that, will, that will baptize you. If, you if, if they can't do it tonight, if you feel the, 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 the necessity of doing it tonight, I'll meet you anywhere you need to go to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so much power in that name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've seen I've seen it happen so many times. People would go down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They'd come up. God fill them with the Holy Ghost. The power of His Spirit would be living in their life. Oh, what a feeling to go down in His wonderful name. To have the blood of Jesus applied to your life. Today, I want to encourage you today to consider this. Strongly consider this. And I'll be praying. I'll be praying that someone receives the revelation of baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. For it is the doctrine of baptism according to God's divine and holy word. Again, my name is Pastor Matthew O'Shell. I pastor, in my opinion, one of the greatest churches around, Solid Rock Apostolic Church. It's a church that is absolutely worth the drive. If you don't have a home church, and if you're looking for a church that loves people, non-judgmental, you come in, you're loved, you are loved, you are loved. You will feel the love too at our, at our, at our church. I want to invite you, 8991 Old State Route 36 in Bradford, Ohio. That's 45308. I want you to be my guest, and I promise you, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. This is Pastor Matthew Shaw. I'm going to sign off now. May the good Lord bless you real good, and I pray that the Spirit of the living God rest upon you tonight. Lord bless you.